Hello all, welcome back to our class. We discussed about um, number system yesterday, right? Like what are all the concepts that we discussed in the previous class, just a small recap. We discussed about different number systems and um, precisely we discussed about rational numbers and uh, decimal representation of rational numbers and how to convert rational numbers of a decimal form into fractional form and fractional forms into decimal forms about terminating decimals as well as non-terminating but repeating decimals. So, today we are going to discuss about the next concept that is irrational numbers. Okay? So, a very important concept of irrational numbers is about thirds. According to the definition of an irrational number, a number which is not a rational is said to be an irrational number. That is what we discussed in the previous class. So, I am going to write that q dash is the representation or the indication of irrational numbers which is equal to set containing x such that x does not belong to q. x does not belong to q means what is q? q is rational number. If any number which is not rational, it is said to be irrational number. right? So, we are going to discuss about what is the basic concept of irrational numbers. right? Let us consider two numbers a as well as n in which a is any positive rational number and n is any positive integer must be more than 1, then a to the power of 1 divided by n, a to the power of 1 divided by n is called a third or a radical, third or a radical of order n. Right? I repeat, let us consider two numbers a and n such that a is any positive rational number and n is any positive integer which is more than 1, then a to the power of 1 by n is said to be a third or a radical of order n provided, provided a cannot be expressed, a cannot be expressed as nth power of a rational number, a cannot be expressed as nth power of a rational number. So, then a to the power of 1 by n is said to be a third or a radical of order n. Right? So, if you understand the definition, then you can easily identify what kind of numbers are thirds and what kind of numbers are not thirds. Okay? A to the power of 1 by n, where a is any positive integer and n is a is any positive rational number and n is any positive integer, it should be greater than 1. And where a cannot be expressed as nth power of a rational number, what does this statement mean? If I write any number which is in the form of a to the power of 1 by n, can I consider that number as an irrational number or a third? No, it is not. It must be satisfying this condition, a cannot be expressed as nth power of a rational number. Let me take an example. I am taking the value of a is equal to 8 and b is equal to 3. Then I can form a number which is in the form of a to the power of 1 by n then a to the power of 1 by n is going to be a is equal to 8 to the power of 1 by 3. Now, 8 to the power of 1 by 3 is in the form of a to the power of 1 by n. But you cannot call this 8 to the power of 1 by 3 as a third because it has to satisfy this condition also. What is this condition? a cannot be expressed, a is equal to 8, right? 8 cannot be expressed as nth power, nth is nothing but third power of one rational number. Can you express 8 as third power of 1 rational number? Absolutely, because 8 can be written as 2 to the power of 3. So, here 8 is third power of 1 rational number, but a cannot be expressed as nth power of 1 rational number. But here we can express 8 as third power of 1 rational number. That is why we cannot say that 8 to the power of 1 by 3 is a third, because 
if you write 8 is equal to 2 to the power of 3 then it is going to be 2 to the power of 3 whole to the power of 1 by 3 now it is in the form of a to the power of m whole to the power of n then it is going to be a to the power of m into n so 3 into 1 by 3 can we cancel 3 and 3 then you get 2 to the power of 1 is equal to 2 is purely irrational number so that is why a cannot be expressed as nth power of a rational number then you can say that a to the power of 1 by n as a third of order n now you can give so many number of examples satisfying these conditions suppose if i write one number 5 to the power of 1 divided by 2 can i say this 5 to the power of 1 by 2 as a third absolutely because 5 cannot be expressed as second power of one rational number how much power 2 is equal to 5 there is no such number right so that is why 5 to the power of 1 by 2 can be considered as a third can i write 25 to the power of 1 divided by 2 as a third i cannot because 25 can be expressed as second power of one number 25 is equal to how much whole power 2 yes 25 is equal to 5 to the power of 2 that is why 25 to the power of 1 by 2 cannot be a third okay so what do you mean by a third or a radical let us consider two numbers where a and n such that a is any positive rational number and n is any positive integer which is more than one e is said to be a third or a radical provided a cannot be expressed as nth power of a rational number then a to the power of 1 by n is said to be a third or a radical right and another representation of a third or radical see this is a to the power of 1 by n we can consider a to the power of 1 by n by the another representation that another representation is going to be a to the power of 1 by n is also written as nth root a right a to the power of 1 by n is equal to nth root a it is not n root a it is nth root a this is entirely different from n into root a see here this n is called order of the third but here n is called just a multiple of the third both are different from each other right so by this we can give so many number of examples let us try to understand what is about nth root a there are different parts of nth root a okay let me write that nth root a in this nth root a the number a particularly the number a is called radicand r a d i c a and d that number a inside the square root whatever the number inside the root that is said to be radicand okay and the number n the number n is called just now we discussed about that that is order of the third order of the radical or index of the radical and especially there is a special symbol that we are using that is nth root the special symbol nth root is said to be sign of the radical sign of the radical or radical sign sign of the radical see these are different parts of an irrational number nth root a right in nth root a n is said to be order of the third or index of the third and a is said to be radicand and nth root is said to be radical sign or sign of the radical so with this we can understand about every single radical of different orders or different index or different radicands right and here we can easily estimate what kind of rational numbers suppose when you are given a set of rational numbers which is greater which is smaller right like that is it possible to decide which radical is more or which radical is less for example there are two radicals given first two radical is first suppose third root 5 and second radical is for example third root 7 these two are two radicals these two radicals of the same order right so these two radicals of the same order and this is the radicand 5 and this is the radicand 7 see since these two radicands 1 is 5 and 1 is 7 we can easily estimate which is greater which is smaller since 5 is smaller than 7 we can say that third root 5 is smaller than third root 7 understand so it is very easy to identify which radical is smaller and which radical is greater when they are of the same order 
if they are not of the same order means if they are of the different orders then we cannot directly say which radical is greater which radical is smaller then definitely you will have to make the order of the radical same okay there is a procedure to find out to make the orders same so let us discuss about what are the types of radicals okay see types of radicals are nth root a and where n is equal to order of the third if the order of the third and according to the definition where n must be more than 1 and moreover n is a positive integer n is a positive integer and n is more than 1 means what n takes the values from 2 onwards n is equal to 2 n equal to 3 n equal to 4 n equal to 5 and so on for example if the order of the third is 2 then what do you call that third in nth root a if order of the third is 2 then what do you call that third nth root a where n is equal to 2 what do you call that third when n is equal to 3 what do you call that third when n is equal to 4 what do you call that third like we already discussed about polynomials right so in polynomials we can assign the degree of the polynomials and accordingly we can name the polynomial so suppose if the degree of the polynomial is 2 what do you call that polynomial quadratic polynomial like that if order of a third is 2 then it is said to be a quadratic third what do you call that third quadratic third this is not a special name you already learned in the concept of polynomials so same as like polynomials if the order of a third is 2 then it is said to be quadratic third yes similarly what do you call uh, a third whose order is equal to 3 yes what is a, what do you call a polynomial whose order is equal to 3 whose degree is equal to 3 is a cubic polynomial like that if order of a third is 3 then it is said to be a cubic third right similarly again according to polynomials degree is equal to 4 what do you call that polynomial it is a biquadratic polynomial so similarly if the order of a third is 4 then it is said to be a biquadratic third right biquadratic third like that from fifth order onwards we just call them as fifth order third sixth order third seventh order third something like that okay there are some special names for second order third order fourth order thirds they are namely quadratic third cubic third biquadratic third respectively so this is about the types of the thirds as per their index or order right now if the third has more number of terms if a third is consists of one term third consists of two terms third consists of three terms then what do you call those thirds okay let us discuss about that see this concept is just similar to the concept of polynomials while you are giving the names of particular polynomials or particular thirds right so coming to the types of thirds according to the number of terms in it okay suppose there is a third okay whatever the order is there is a third which is fifth root 2 otherwise another third x root y another third p to the power of 1 divided by 3 q so all these thirds having a single term in it if a third has a single term in it then those kind of thirds are said to be simple thirds otherwise monomial thirds simple third are monomial third monomial is nothing but a single third single term in this okay so if a third has a single term in it then it is said to be a simple third or monomial third suppose if a third consists of two terms two terms are nothing but the combination of positive or negative right so my third is root over 3 minus fifth root over 7 so this is the third is the combination of two terms and one more third I would say uh, 15th root x minus third root y this is another third which is the combination of two terms and if I would say x into y root p plus p root q this is one more third how many number of terms are there in these thirds this third consists of two terms two terms two terms if a third is the combination of two terms then those kind of thirds are said to be binomial thirds what do you mean by bi bi is nothing but two so that they are said to be binomial thirds 
So, similarly we can say that if CERD is the combination of three different CERDs, three simple CERDs or three monomial CERDs, what do you call that CERD? That CERD itself is said to be a trinomial CERD and if a CERD consists of four terms then quadrinomial CERDs. So, like that there are different names of the CERDs as per the number of terms in it. Hope you understand. So, this is about types of CERDs according to the degree as well as types of CERDs according to the number of terms in it. Okay, right. Coming to the next concept, is it possible to add or subtract certs? Let us have a look on this. You are given two certs, those two certs are like square root 3 plus square root 5. These two are two certs. These two are two certs of the same order, but their radicands are different. If the radicands are different, then we cannot add them. So, the value of root 3 plus root 5 is root 3 plus root 5 itself. Understand? Suppose my third is square root 3 and another third is going to be 3 into square root 3. Now, this is 1 root 3 and this is 3 root 3. Totally how many number of root 3s are there? Obviously, you can say that this is 4 times root 3. So, addition or subtraction of certs is possible when they are same certs. Understand? So, this is about addition of certs as well as subtraction of certs is also the, the same. right? So, this way we can add or subtract two similar certs. right? And moreover, this is root 3 and this is 3 root 3, both the orders are same. Order is equal to 2 because you can call it as square root 3 or square root 2 or square root 5. So, this is root 3 in the sense you can call it as square root 3, both are same, right? There is no confusion at all. Square root 3, square root 3, even if you write 2 or not, it is okay, does not matter. But if it is other than 2, definitely you will have to mention that. So, for example, third root 5 is there. You cannot write third root 5 as root 5 like this. So, root 5 means that is square root 5 by default. Otherwise, you will have to call by its order, okay? Now, coming to the comparison of certs, this is very important concept of certs. How do we compare two certs? How do we compare two certs? What is meant by comparison? What do you mean by that comparison? Comparison is nothing but we can compare two objects in terms of their sizes or in terms of their shapes. Now, since these are the numbers, so definitely we will have to compare their sizes. Sizes are nothing but which is smaller and which is greater. So, in order to compare two thirds, for example, my first third is third root 2 and second third is square root 3. These two are two thirds. I just want to compare both of them. If they are of the same order, just now we discussed about that. If two thirds of the same order, then definitely whatever the third which has the greater radicand that is the greatest radical. So, now third root 2 and square root 3, both thirds have different orders so that we cannot compare them directly. Then what has to be done? First of all, you will have to make the thirds of the same order. How is that possible to make the thirds into same order? First of all, convert those radical forms into exponential forms. What is exponential form? We had already discussed about this. a to the power of 1 by n can be written as nth root a or nth root a is equal to a to the power of 1 by n. Then when you compare third root 2 into exponential form, then it is going to be 2 to the power of 1 by 3 and this is going to be 3 to the power of 1 by 2. Right? Now, our task is to make 3 and 2 same. How do we make 3 and 2 same? We cannot make them. Then, what is the greatest least common multiple of 3 and 2? Is nothing but the LCM of 3 and 2. What is LCM of 3 and 2? So, LCM of 3 and 2 is going to be 6. Right? So, our primary task is to make the denominators of the powers into 6. So, 2 to the power of 1 by 3 is nothing but 3 into how much is equal to 6? 3 into 2 is equal to 6. So, multiply by 2 and divided by 2. Similarly, 3 to the power of 1 by 2 is there. So, that multiply by 2, this is 2 right, 2 into 3 is equal to 6. So, multiply by 3 and divided by 3. Then this third will become 
1 times 2 is equal to 2 divided by 3 times 2 is equal to 6 and this is 3 to the power of 1 times 3 is equal to 3 divided by 3 times 2 is equal to 6. How am I going to write this? 3 to the 2 to the power of 2 by 6, 3 to the power of 3 by 6. I can write this as 2 to the power of 2 whole to the power of 1 divided by 6 because it is in the form of a power m into n. a power m into n is equal to a to the power of m whole to the power of n. See when you multiply 2 and 1 by 6, 2 into 1 by 6 is going to be 2 by 6. That is why we will write 2 to the power of 2 by 6 as 2 to the power of 2 whole to the power of 1 by 6. Similarly, what about this 3 to the power of 3 by 6, 3 to the power of 3 whole to the power of 1 by 6. Got it? You know what is the value of 2 to the power of 2? 2 square is equal to 4. I would write here 4 to the power of 1 divided by 6. And what about this 3 power 3 is equal to 27 to the power of 1 by 6. See both of them are in which form? Exponential form. Can we convert both of them into radical form? Yes, we can. See here it is in the form of a power 1 by n, 4 power 1 by 6. So, it is 4 power 1 by 6, a power 1 by n. Then you can write it as nth root a. In the place of n you have 6. Can we write it as 6th root 4? Yes. Similarly, what about this? 6th root 27. Now, you can easily observe that which radicand is greater? 27 is greater than 4 because of the same order. So, which radicand is greater? That is the greatest radical. So, you can say that 6th root 4 is smaller than 6th root 27. 6th root 4 is the modified form of 3rd root 2. So, that 3rd root 2 is smaller than square root 3. So, understand how to simplify this? So, this is the way of estimating or comparing two certs of different order. Okay? So, when you are comparing two certs of the different order, then make sure that the orders must be same. right? So, when the orders are not same, definitely you will have to follow the procedure to make the orders same and then finally, you will have to compare the radicands to compare the given two thirds. Right? So, this is one of the examples. Yes, we understand how to compare two radicals. Now, let us try to understand is it possible to add these two radicals of the different order? Just now we discussed about this problem also. If two radicals of the different order, then we cannot add or we cannot subtract to get its simplified form. Whatever the number is given, that is only the simplest form. right? But we cannot add or we cannot subtract both the radicals of the different order. But is it possible to multiply or is it possible to divide one third with the other third of different order? Obviously, it is possible and moreover, it is only possible when they are of the same order. right? When they are of the same order in the sense, see here it is a to the power of 1 by n. You can write it as a to the power of 1 by n into same order, right? for example, b to the power of 1 by n. Is it possible to multiply both of them? a to the power of 1 by n into b to the power of 1 by n can be written as a into b whole to the power of 1 by n. Correct. So, with this only logic, we can easily multiply two thirds of different orders after converting them into same order. For example, you are going to multiply third root 2 and second root 3. So, when is that possible? It is possible only when you convert them into same order. Yes, obviously, the same procedure will have to follow. So, finally, you are going to multiply both of them, right? When you multiply both of them, then the first number is 6 root 4 and the second number is 6th root 27. right? So, you can write this one as 6th root 4 into 27. So, whatever the number you get, that is what the product of these two different thirds. In fact, the division also happens the same way. See, 6th root 4 divided by 6th root 27. You can write it as 6th root 4 divided by 27. Hope you understand about multiplication and division of thirds of different order. Okay. I repeat, if two orders of the same, two thirds of the same order, if two thirds of the same order, then we can compare which one is the smaller and which one is the greater third. And comparison as well as multiplication as well as division of two thirds of different orders is only possible 
when they are of the same order means you will have to convert them into the same order and you can perform multiplication or division right and next level of this concept is is it possible to convert a third into a rational number that is basically a third third is nothing but an irrational number an irrational number means what a number which is not a rational number is said to be an irrational number but by some operations we can convert that part into a rational number right let us see how is that possible you have a number like for example i am taking second ordered thirds second ordered third in the sense square root 3 or square root 5 or square root 7 something like that okay square root 2 is one number when i multiply square root 2 by one more irrational number or one more third then definitely i should get a rational number can you get what is that um, third being multiplied to square root 2 to get a rational number yes that is root 2 into root 2 will become root 2 square root 2 square is equal to what you can write it as 2 square whole to the power of 1 by 2 which is equal to 2 like that for example square root 3 is there square root 3 into square root 3 which is equal to square root 3 whole square what is the value of square root 3 whole square i do not know what is the value of square root 3 whole square then i am going to convert that square root 3 into exponential form so what is the exponential form of square root 3 3 to the power of 1 by 2 whole square is there so whole square it is in the form of a power m whole power n which is equal to a power m into n so 2 to gets cancelled which is equal to 3 right so from these examples we can understand one thing that if two thirds which are equal as well as they are second ordered thirds are being multiplied then you can write root over x into root over x this is only possible for second ordered thirds and if they are same thirds when you multiply root x into root x you can say that root x whole square which is going to be x by these two examples so you can understand in such a way that square and root cancel or whatever it is but finally the result remains x okay if it is root 2 into root 2 then it is 2 okay so this way we can uh, simplify two thirds of the same order and they are of the same radicand of course they are equal thirds basically okay so this way we can find out um, the simplest forms of the thirds okay and then the last concept of our number systems is loss of exponents so what are these loss of exponents we already learned in grade uh, 8 as well as grade 7 these loss of exponents are like a to the power of m into a to the power of n is going to be a to the power of m plus n and a to the power of m divided by a to the power of n is equal to a to the power of m minus n and a to the power of m whole to the power of n is equal to a to the power of m into n and a to the power of minus m is equal to 1 divided by a to the power of m or a divided by b whole to the power of minus m is equal to b divided by a whole to the power of m but here i just wanted to tell you one interesting thing that is what is the value of a to the power of 0 a to the power of 0 everybody says that a to the power of 0 is equal to 1 but how is that a to the power of 0 is equal to 1 for example you are given a number 5 to the power of 3 so what is the meaning of 5 to the power of 5 to the power of 3 or 5 raised to the power of 3 means 5 is multiplied by itself 3 times so that is why that number 5 power 3 is 5 into 5 into 5 so easily we can estimate what is the value of 5 power 3 that is 5 into 5 is 25 into 5 is equal to 125 there ends the matter but i just want to know what is the value of 5 to the power of 0 it means 5 raised to the power of 0 according to the definition 5 multiplied 0 number of times what do you mean by 0 number of times it is not possible right 5 multiplied by itself 0 number of times 0 number of times is nothing but there is no times you are multiplying then how do you get 5 to the power of 0 is equal to 1 then definitely we will have to think about that okay but if you just think logically about this 5 to the power of 0 or a to the power of 0 or any number we have some loss here okay i am going to 
consider one law over there that law is a to the power of m divided by a to the power of n is equal to a to the power of m minus n. Okay? I will stick towards a to the power of m divided by a to the power of n. I am going to use this in order to find the value of phi to the power of 0. That value is, for example, phi to the power of 0 that is. So, 0 is, I am expressing that 0 as the difference between two equal numbers. Can I write 0 is equal to 3 minus 3 or 4 minus 4 or 5 minus 4 or 2 minus 2? Yes, I can write. So, that I am writing that 0 as some 6 minus 6. Okay? 5 to the power of 6 minus 6. That is your wish. But they must be equal numbers. See, 5 to the power of 6 minus 6 is in the form of a power m minus n, right? What is the formula for a power m minus n? a to the power of m divided by a to the power of n. So, a power m means 5 to the power of 6 divided by a to the power of n means again 5 to the power of 6. What is the value of 5 to the power of 6 by 5 to the power of 6? Even both numerator and denominators are same. Then 5 power 6, 5 power 6 gets cancelled. You left with 1. So, that is why the value of 5 to the power of 0 is equal to 1. You understand? So, anything to the power of 0 is equal to 1 can be proved by this way. Right? So, this is all about the first chapter. Hope you understand. Right? Thank you.